The Bielgorod Kharkov Strategic Offensive Operation, or simply Bielgorod Kharkov Offensive Operation, was a Soviet strategic summer offensive that aimed to recapture Bielgorod and Kharkov A, and destroy the German forces of the 4th Panzer Army and Army Detachment Kempf. The operation was codenamed Operation Polkovodets Remiantsev, after the 18th century Field Marshal Peter Remiantsev and was conducted by the Voronish and Steppe Fronts in the southern sector of the Kusk Bulge. The battle was referred to as the Fourth Battle of Kharkov by the Germans. The operation began in the early hours of 3 August 1943, with the objective of following up the successful Soviet defensive effort in the Battle of Kusk. The offensive was directed against the German Army Group South's northern flank. By 23 August, the troops of the Voronish and Steppe Fronts had liberated Kharkov. It was the last time that Kharkov changed hands during the Soviet-German War. The operation led to the retreat of the German forces in Ukraine behind the Dnieper River and set the stage for the Battle of Kiev in autumn 1943. Chapter 1 – Background Operation Polkovodets Rumiantsev had been planned by Stavka to be the major Soviet summer offensive in 1943. However, Due to heavy losses sustained during the Battle of Kusk in July, time was needed for the Soviet formations to recover and regroup. The operation commenced on 3 August, with the aim of the defeating the 4th Panzer Army, Army Group Kempf, and the southern wing of Army Group South. It was also hoped that the German 1st Panzer Army and the newly reformed 6th Army would be trapped by an advance of the Red Army forces to the Asov Sea. The Soviet forces included the Voronezh Front and the Steppe Front, which deployed about 1,144,000 men with 2,418 tanks and 13,633 guns and rocket launchers for the attack. Against this the German army could field 200,000 men and 237 tanks and assault guns. When the Soviet Southern Front and the Southwestern Front launched a diversionary attack across the Dnieper and Mies rivers in an apparent attempt to cut off the German forces extended in the southern portion of the German Army Group South on 17 July, its Commander General Erich von Monstein responded by moving the 2nd SS Panzer Corps, 24 Corps and 48 Panzer Corps southward to blunt the Soviet offensive. As intended, these Soviet operations drew off German forces from the main thrust of the Soviet offensive, dissipating the German reserve in anticipation for their main drive. The Soviet plan called for the 5th and 6th Guards armies, and the 53rd Army, to attack on a 30 km wide sector, supported by a heavy artillery concentration, and break through the five successive German defensive lines between Kusk and Kharkov. The former two armies had borne the brunt of the German attack in Operation Citadel. Supported by two additional mobile corps, the 1st Tank Army and the 5th Guards Tank Army, both mostly re-equipped after the end of Operation Citadel, would act as the front's mobile groups and develop the breakthrough by encircling Kharkov from the north and west. Mikhail Katukov's 1st Tank Army was to form the westward-facing outer encirclement line, while Pavel Rotmistrov's 5th Guards Tank Army would form the inner line, facing the city. A secondary attack to the west of the main breakthrough, was to be conducted by the 27th and 40th armies with the support of four separate tank corps. Meanwhile, to the east and southeast, the 69th and 7th Guards armies, followed later by the Southwestern Front's 57th Army, were to join the attack. Chapter 2 – Offensive Operation on 3 August the offensive was begun with a heavy artillery barrage directed against the German defensive positions. Though the German defenders fought tenaciously, the two tank armies committed to the battle could not be held back. By 5 August the Soviets had broken through the German defensive lines, moving into the rear areas and capturing Bielgorod while advancing some 60 kilometers. Delivering powerful sledgehammer blows from the north and east, the attackers overwhelmed the German defenders. German reserves were shifted from the Oral sector and north from the Donbas regions in an attempt to stem the tide and slow down the Soviet attacks. Success was limited to the Panzergrenadier Division Großdeutschland delaying the 40th Army by a day. Seven Panzer and motorized divisions making up the 3rd Panzer Corps, 
along with four infantry divisions were assembled to counter-attack into the flank of the advancing Soviet forces but were checked. After nine days the SS Division Das Rai and the SS Division Totenkopf arrived and initiated a counter-attack against the two Soviet armies near Bogodyohov, 30 kilometers northwest of Kharkov. In the following armored battles of firepower and maneuver the SS divisions destroyed a great many Soviet tanks. To assist the 6th Guards Army and the 1st Tank Army, the 5th Guards Tank Army joined the battles. All three Soviet armies suffered heavily, and the tank armies lost more than 800 of their initial 1,112 tanks. These Soviet reinforcements stopped the German counter-attack, but their further offensive plans were blunted. With the Soviet advance around Bogodyuhov stopped, the Germans now began to attempt to close the gap between Iktika and Krasnokotsk. The counterattack started on the 18th of August, and on the 20th of August, Totenkopf and Grossdeutschland met behind the Soviet units. Parts of two Soviet armies and two tank corps were trapped, but the trapped units heavily outnumbered the German units. Many Soviet units were able to break out, while suffering heavy casualties. After this setback the Soviet troops focused on Kharkov and captured it after heavy fighting on 23 August. The battle is usually referred to as the Fourth Battle of Kharkov by the Germans and the Belgorod Kharkov strategic offensive operation by the Soviets. The Soviet operation was executed in two primary axes, one in the Belgorod Kharkov axis and another in the Belgorod Bogodyohov axis. On the first day, the units of the Voronezh Front quickly penetrated the German front line defenses on the boundary of the 4th Panzer Army and Army Detachment Kempf, between Tamarovka and Belgorod, and gained 100 km in a sector along the Ektika Bogodyohov Olsheny Zolikev line along the banks of the Merla River. They were finally halted on 12 August by armored units of the 3rd Panzer Corps. On 5 August 1943 11 Corps evacuated the city of Bielgorod. Chapter 3, Liberation of Kharkov Following its withdrawal from Bielgorod on the night of 5-6 August 1943, the 11th Army Corps under the command of General Erhard Raus now held defensive positions south of the city between the Donets and Lopen rivers north of Kharkov. The 11th Army Corps consisted of a Kompfgruppe from the 167th Infantry Division, the 168th, 106th, 198th, 320th Infantry Divisions, and the 6th Panzer Division which acted as was the Corps Reserve. This constituted a deep salient east into Soviet lines and was subject to outflanking attempts on the Corps' left flank, Soviet armored units had already appeared 20 miles behind the Corps front line. 11 Army Corps now made a series of phased withdrawals toward Kharkov to prevent encirclement. Only reaching the final defenses north of the city on 12 August 1943, following breakthroughs by the 57th and 69th Armies in several sectors of the front line, the disintegration of the 168th Infantry Division and after an intervention by the Corps Reserve. When its attempts to force a breakthrough in the Bogodyohov Olsheny Zolikev met with frustration along the Merla River, the Steppe Front directed its assaults towards Korotich, a sector held by SS Division Das Rai, to cut the Poltava Kharkov rail link. Fierce fighting ensued, in which Korotich was captured by the 5th Guards Mechanized Corps and subsequently recaptured by the Das Rai infantry, then to remain under German control but the 5th Guards Tank Army cut the rail link finally on the 22nd of August 1943. The loss of this line of communication was a serious blow to the ability of the Army Detachment Kempf to defend its positions around the city. This meant critical delays of supplies and reinforcements, and the unit's position was becoming increasingly untenable. The way to Poltava now remained open, but Soviet General Nikolai Vatutin hesitated to push through while the Germans flanking the gap held firm. Instead, he turned his left flank armies, the 5th Guards Tank Army and the 5th Guards Army, against the western front of Army Group Kempf where the 2nd and 3rd SS Panzer Divisions fought to keep the front angled southwestward away from Kharkov. On the weaker east front of Army Group Kempf, the Soviet 57th Army cleared the right bank of the Donets between Chugayev and Zmiev. These threats had led to a request by General Werner Kempf to abandon the city on 12 August 1943. 
Monstein did not object, but Adolf Hitler countered with an order that the city had to be held under all circumstances. After a prediction that the order to hold Kharkov would produce another Stalingrad, on 14 August 1943 Kemp was relieved by Monstein who appointed General Otto Werler in Kemp's place. A few days later, Army Group Kempf was renamed the 8th Army. Kharkov now constituted a deep German salient to the east, which prevented the Red Army from making use of this vital traffic and supply center. Following boastful reports made by Soviet radio that Soviet troops had entered the city, when in fact it was still held by 11 Army Corps, Joseph Stalin personally ordered its immediate capture. The German supply situation in Kharkov was now untenable, artillerymen, after firing their last rounds, were abandoning their guns to fighters' infantry. The army's supply depot had five trainloads of spare tank tracks left over from Operation Citadel but very little else. The high consumption of ammunition in the last month and a half had cut into supplies put aside for the last two weeks of August and the first two weeks of September, until the turn of the month the army would have to get along with 50% of its daily average requirements in artillery and tank ammunition. 11 Army Corps now had a combat strength of only 4,000 infantrymen, one man for every 10 yards of front. Two days after taking command of 8th Army, Verla also asked Monstein for permission to abandon the city. Regardless of Hitler's demands, Verla and Monstein agreed that the city could not be held for long. On 21 August 1943, Monstein gave his consent to abandon Kharkov. On the 22nd of August 1943 the German troops began their retreat from the city, under pressure from the Red Army. The 57th and 69th armies pushed in from three sides with the coming of daylight. The Soviets sensed that the Germans were evacuating Kharkov, due to the lessening of artillery fire and diminishing resistance in the front lines. Later in the day, thunderous explosions were heard and ammunition dumps were blown up. Large German columns were then observed leaving the city and the Soviet troops pushed into the largely destroyed city. Moving out of Kharkov to the south, the German forces fought to hold open a corridor through which the 8th Army could withdraw. Soviet artillery and mortars shelled the corridor, and planes strafed and bombed the German columns. After dark, the 89th Guards and 107th Rifle Divisions broke into the interior of the city, driving the last German rearguard detachments before them. Enormous fires were set by the Germans as part of the scorched earth policy. By 0200 on 23 August 1943, elements of the 183rd Rifle Division pushed into the city center, reached the Dzerzhinsky Square and met men from the 89th Rifle Division. The Soviet troops hoisted a red banner over the city once again. By 1100, Kharkov and its outskirts had been taken completely. The final battle for the city was over. Chapter 4, Aftermath By re-establishing a continuous front on Army Group South's left flank, the 4th Panzer Army and the 8th Army had, for the moment, blunted the Soviet thrust, but to the north and southeast fresh blows had already been dealt or were in the making. Employing the rippling effect that marked their offensives, the Red Army, thwarted in one place, had shifted to others. For the first time in the war they had the full strategic initiative, and they used it well. The failure of the German offensive in the Battle of Kusk meant the Germans permanently lost the strategic initiative on the Eastern Front, although Hitler refused to acknowledge it. The large manpower losses of the Wehrmacht in July and August 1943 severely restricted Army Group South and Center to react to future thrusts during the winter and 1944. Operations Polkovodets Rumiantsev, along with the concurrent Operation Kutuzov marked the first time in the war that the Germans were not able to defeat a major Soviet offensive during the summer and regain their lost ground and the strategic initiative. Losses for the operation are difficult to establish due to large numbers of transfers and missing in action. Soviet casualties in the Bielgorod Kharkov sector during this operation are estimated to be 71,611 killed and 183,955 wounded, 1,864 tanks, 423 artillery guns, 
and 153 aircraft were lost. German personnel losses were at least 10,000 killed and missing and 20,000 wounded. German tank losses are estimated to be several times lower than Soviet tank losses. Chapter 4 Section 1 Sources